the difference with Jehovah's Witnesses is, is they do not believe that that um, the Holy Spirit they do not believe that they are inspired by God I'm going to show you this picture again so so John John was a, a faithful and discreet slave he was uh, a member of the 144,000 sealed um, and the message he was getting from Jehovah was in, infallible but the message that the hundred the, the faithful and discreet slave today are getting is not is not uh, um, error error free um, I'm trying I'm trying to remember I'm trying to explain it to you the way that that I, I was had it explained to me um, Give me a second here. Okay. Um, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Just imagine, there's the numbers are, are fluctuating. Originally, there was Charles Chase Russell, one one man show, who was basically the the, the faithful and a, a discreet slave. Uh, and um, then there was another president, uh, J.F. Rutherford, and then I understand Brother Knorr, I think it was, and then Fred Franz, and I understand Fred Franz was the last single president. They, they broke it into a, a governing body where there was um, no longer a single president. Um, the former presidents I, I think with the exception of, of, of Charles Chase Russell uh, did not act alone they, they, they did you know uh, meet together um, when they did meet together they, they would pray to Jehovah for his Holy Spirit um, to guide them for the truth um, they would pray for um if they're making decisions, uh, they would pray for Jehovah's Spirit to guide them to make the right decision. Um, th when they were interpreting scriptures, they would pray for the Spirit to to understand the the scripture. After praying, they would. look at the Bible they would look for relevant uh, principles that were related to uh, the issues that they were investigating when making decisions or when interpreting scripture they would look to other parts of the Bible that would shed light on 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 what they were focused on by doing so they believe that the Holy Spirit since the Bible is infallible since the, the Bible was, you know, uh, written through the guidance of Holy Spirit, by referring to the Bible and, and, and looking for the harmony in, in the Scripture and, and by following the truth found in the Bible, they would believe that God was uh, revealing uh, Himself uh, to them. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that um, I, I'm just going to go back to something I, I, I read to you earlier to, to make this point again. Page 15. To understand the book of Revelation we need three things. To receive the help of Jeho Jehovah's Spirit, okay, uh, that's that's what they pray for. Uh, second, to discern when the Lord's day began. I'm not really understanding why they why they say that. Maybe it'll come to me soon. And thirdly, 
to recognize the faithful and discreet slave today. So they're saying you cannot understand the Bible book of Revelation if you do not recognize the faithful and discreet slave today. They are claiming to be the channel of God. They are claiming that only God, Jehovah, through His Holy Spirit, is revealing the true interpretation of Scripture through this governing body. That means that other members of the organization are not are not a channel. Even if they pray for the Holy Spirit, even if they read the Bible, uh, they are not the channel of Jehovah. The channel of Jehovah is this anointed governing body. Okay, that's that is that is what they are claiming. That is what they are teaching. Okay, um, but on the other hand, they're saying that they are fallible. So, is that a contradiction? There's a way to get around that. Um, they say that, um, okay, for example, they've, they've reversed a lot of their, their predictions and prophecies. Um, and, and yet, I mean, God doesn't make mistakes. So if, if God is, is, if Jehovah is, is giving them the information as, as the only true channel, how come, how come there's false predictions? How come things are, are, are not coming true? Um, what they use the scripture and Proverbs uh, um, talks about a light that gets brighter um, as 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 the as we we near the end of the world that a, a righteous person their understanding will will get brighter and brighter. Um, it's like it's like a child, right? When when you are young. You don't know everything, you know. You you learn through mistakes. Your 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 perception of the world is 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 inaccurate. You don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. So, Jehovah's Witnesses are saying that, that this governing body, um, God is not revealing everything at once to them. Uh, the the light is is getting brighter. Um, and when they make mistakes, they say, "Well, they're not blaming. You can't blame God because God did not want us to know everything all at once." Um, and uh, um, and what they say, this is, this is a very interesting line. If if you see, if you see something wrong happening within the organization. They tell you to wait on Jehovah and um, I, I'm losing my thoughts over here. What do they what do they say <laughs> to those to those that um, are, are you know finding teachings that are not that don't seem scriptural? And, and they're saying that this is God's channel just okay I just remember they're saying God is testing your integrity he's testing your humility uh, um, he's testing your submission to Jehovah's arrangement um, they're saying that there are clear indications that this is God's organization um, and um, he's testing your integrity, your faithfulness, your submission uh, through these errors. Um, so that way, you can't blame you can't blame Jehovah and say uh, he gave us he gave us the wrong information. They say no, this is this was a test of integrity, um, which is 
which is which is very different which is very interesting because if you look if you look at the way Jehovah did things in the first century um, and that's what I'm going to I'm going to make a second part to this I'm going to examine uh, the context of Matthew chapter 24 and and look how Jehovah was dealing with the the faithful and discreet slave class originally okay Stay tuned. Thank you.